Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to be using the derivative formula to find derivatives and then also we're going to be finding tangent lines, so let's just jump right into it. So these are the three examples that I'm going to go through today. So I am going to be using the derivative formula to calculate each derivative and then I have a point here and then I want to find the um, tangent line at that point. Okay, so let's get started. So starting here with A. So remember the formula for the derivative, so it's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, all of this over h. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is actually go ahead and evaluate all of that. So I'm going to plug x plus h into my function, and then I need to just subtract it off like this. So there I've plugged everything in. And so now from here what you've got to do is just work everything out as far as you possibly can. So we're going to have to foil this part out. So this is going to be minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared. Make sure you don't forget that this minus sign dis distributes to all the results in here. Then this is minus 4 plus x squared and then all of this is over h. Okay, so now you'll notice here that the 4's drop out and the x squareds drop out. So let me clear some space. So from here, this is going to give me the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2xh minus h squared divided by h. So now I really need to divide each part of this by h, so I am left with the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2x minus h, and now I can finally take the limit so this will just equal negative 2x. All right, so this is the first part. So this is actually my f prime of x, okay? All right, so now let's clear some space. And I've written the form of my derivative up here. So the thing to keep in mind, this is not your tangent line. This is how you figure out the slope of the tangent line. So to figure out the slope of the tangent line, so the slope of the tangent line, what you do is you plug this point into the derivative. So I'm going to evaluate f prime of 1, so I just need the x coordinate from that point. So I plug that in and I get negative 2. So this is our m. So remember, for a, a line you need a slope, m, and a point. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the point slope formula like this. And I've really got everything I need for this, right? My slope is m, and then my point is this x1 at y1, that would be my 1, 3. So from here, I can just plug everything in, and I'm going to put this into slope-intercept form. So this is negative 2x plus 2. So in the end, my tangent line, the form of my tangent line will be negative 2x plus 5. So that would be our tangent line. So we've got both our derivative and our tangent line at the given point. So moving on to the next one. So um, I would highly recommend if you are trying to learn this, maybe you try to pause and find the derivative on your own and then hit play. So for this one, I'm going to have f of x plus h minus f of x. So I just keep writing down this formula. This is a really good way to help you memorize this, by the way, if you if you don't, if you're not in the habit of that. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug in x plus h. So this is 1 minus x plus h for 2 over x plus h minus 1 minus x over 2x, all of this over h. So this is a little bit tricky. This is really turned now more into like a complex fraction. So what we're going to want to do here, th there's more than one way that you can do this. My personal preference is to find the LCD of the fractions and then multiply the top and bottom of this by that LCD. So if you if you look at this, the LCD, let me write this in a different color, I wrote this in green, LCD. So the LCD of these two fractions, so they both have a 2 in common, right? So I don't have to write the 2 down twice. So it's 2, one of them has an x plus h and one of them just has an x. So this is the LCD. So you could get a common denominator and go through all that, but I personally just prefer getting rid of all the fractions right away. So what I mean is that I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by that LCD. So when you multiply by the LCD, you have to do it on the top and on the bottom. So whatever you do to the top of the fraction, you have to do to the bottom of the fraction. 
This entire piece is the top of the fraction. This piece down here is the bottom of the fraction. And so now what you're basically going to do is you're distributing this into these two parts, right? So the reason that you're doing this is that when you multiply this part times this, you are, so let me use a different color, you're going to cancel out the 2 times x plus h, right? That will be canceled out. The only thing that's left over would be this x here. So this part here, I can multiply by x. And then when I multiply this whole thing by this, what cancels out? The 2 and the x. So for this part, the 2 and the x cancel out. And so then I have to multiply, let's see, I'm really running out of space here. I'd have to multiply this by x plus h. So that's kind of like a, a shortcut to that. Okay, so let me write that out. So I've got the limit as x approaches 0 of, I'm just going to write out what I actually have to multiply here. So I distributed the 1 uh, minus x minus h, so that's that part. And then this is this minus x plus h, 1 minus x. And then notice in the bottom, this is going to be 2xh times x plus h. Okay, so I need to clear some space. So now that I have this, I need to go ahead and start distributing this x here and then foiling out this part. So let me do that. So I've got the limit of these h approaches 0. So this is x minus x squared minus xh. And then this, this is going to be x minus x squared plus h minus xh. All of this is over 2xh times x plus h. Okay, so now I can see that I can I can cancel out some things. So like this x, let me use a different color, this x here is going to drop out, the x squared is going to drop out, and uh, it looks like even the xh is going to drop out, which is pretty great. So all I'm left with, notice I haven't done anything to the bottom yet. I usually like to just work on one part at a time to see if anything else will cancel out. Um, so now on top, I'm just left with negative h over 2xh times x plus h. And so now I can cancel out my h's. So now I've just got to take the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 over 2x times x plus h. And so now I can finally take the limit as h goes to 0. So this will ultimately equal negative 1 over 2x squared. Okay, so that's just the work to find the derivative. So let me clear this space and just note this derivative. So another reminder, and this is something you want to keep repeating to yourself over and over. This is not the tangent line. This is how you find the slope of the tangent line. So the next thing is if we want to find the tangent line at 1, 0, we now have to plug 1 into this. So if I take y prime of 1, so I just plug in 1, this equals negative 1 half. So this is my m for the tangent line. Okay, so once again, I've got now my uh, slope and my point. So I can use the point slope form. So I can take this y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And so this is going to be y minus 0 equals negative 1 half times x minus 1. And so then I get y equals negative 1 half x plus 1 half. And so that would be my tangent line. Now this last one, if you have to use the definition of the derivative, this one's actually a pretty tough one to work through. So this is going to take us a, a few a few minutes. I'd highly recommend just trying to get this one set up on your own so that you can kind of figure out why this is difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in x plus h into this. 3 over 2, and then this is going to be x to the 3 over 2, and then all of that over h. Okay, so let's talk about why this is difficult. So first and foremost, you cannot distribute these these exponents, right? So hopefully we all remember x plus h to the 3 halves does not equal x to the 3 halves plus h to the 3 halves. This You, you would have to normally like try to foil this or something, but you can't do that with, with this uh, rational exponent. So this makes this really, really difficult actually. So we're going to have to get creative here. So 
one thing to think about with rational exponents, what, what's making this hard is that it is a rational exponent, right? So why don't we break up the rational exponents just to see if that helps us at all. So this is going to be x plus h times x plus h to the 1 half. So notice this is x plus h to the first, so 1 plus 1 half gives me 3 halves, so we all agree that that works. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the x, so I'm going to call this x times x to the 1 half and then all of this over the h. So you have to get pretty creative here actually to, to figure this out. So you are not going to be able to do anything with like this x plus h to the 1 half. You're not going to be able to break this up as it is. But what you'll notice here is if you were to distribute this, this is actually going to kind of make things a lot easier. So I want to distribute this, so I'll make some room. And so let's take a look at how to actually distribute this. So I still have my limit as h approaches 0. So this is x times x plus h to the 1 half plus h times x plus h to the 1 half minus x times x to the 1 half, all of this over h. Now, I highly recommend, if you're playing along at home here, that you're actually writing this down and engaging with this problem to understand why it's so difficult. And I'd highly recommend that you try to pause the video here and try to come up with a strategy of what to do next before I just tell you. So the thing that you want to notice here is now as I look across here, I have this x and this x here, which means that I could actually factor those x's out if I put them together. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of move those things together. So I get x and then this x plus h to the 1 half minus x times x to the 1 half, and then I have this other h times x plus h to the 1 half, all of this over h. Okay, so now as I think about this, I actually am starting to realize that two problems are emerging. And this is like something where a lot of times you have to just stare at it and kind of just creatively start coming up with solutions. So here I can factor out the x's and see if there's something that I can do. But here, notice that this h would cancel out with this h. So now what I want to do is I actually want to split this problem up. So let me do that. I'll make some space. And we're going to break this into two separate problems. So out of this part, I'm going to factor out the x's. So this is going to be x times, let's see, I'll use a square bracket, x times uh, x plus h to the 1 half minus x to the 1 half and all of this over h, there's one part, and then the other part is this plus h times x plus h to the 1 half, all of this over h. And now I have to put a set of parentheses around the whole thing because now I've broken this into two terms versus before this was just one giant term. So now you can see here that at least this part of the limit, we could totally evaluate this. The h's actually drop out, so that part's kind of done, but the tricky part now is what do we do? <laughs> what do we do with this monstrosity? Okay, so what I want to do is I actually want to rewrite this in another way to see if this kickstarts an idea. So if you are not sure when you're working with rational exponents, sometimes it can be helpful to rewrite things in its radical form to see if that sparks an idea. So here's, here's where the problem is at now, and I went ahead and I canceled out that h. Okay, so thinking about what I know about limits, the problem with this part right now is if I tried to take the limit as h approaches 0, I would get a h in, or I would get a 0 in the denominator. But what trick do we know when we have square roots and, and we're having um, we're, we're unable to evaluate the limit? We usually use the conjugate, right? So that's actually what we want to do next. So like I said, this, this problem is, is not, this is not a simple problem. So what I want to do is I want to take just this part of the limit and I'm going to clear some space and then we're just going to focus on this part. So I'm going to do all of this in gold just so that we're aware of what I'm, what I'm actually working on here. So I've got this x and then this square root of x plus h minus the square root of x, all of this over h. So like I said, we're going to want to multiply by the conjugate here. So I'm just going to multiply the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x 
multiply that by the top and bottom. So hopefully this is a trick you're pretty familiar with from, from limits already. If not, I've got videos where I do actually talk about it. So you can look in some of my old limit videos to find this. So what I want to do now is I want to multiply just this part, just this set of parentheses with this set of parentheses. And I'm not going to show all the detail for this. I highly recommend that you pause the video and actually try to work out all the detail. I, I will show you what this comes out to. So I get X times, so this becomes X plus H minus X. And then the stuff in the bottom, I'm not going to multiply it together because you'll see why in a second. So I'm just going to leave all that alone. So a lot of times you don't have to multiply the part that, that doesn't have the conjugate with it. You don't have to multiply that together. Usually something will drop out. So check out what I'm actually left with. The X's inside the parentheses drop out. So I'm just left with this H. So now I can make another cancellation. So now I can go ahead and write this out as XH over H times all this stuff. Uh, and let's see, oh, this was plus, right? This was plus, my bad. I will throw off my answer later if I don't have that right. So sorry, that was supposed to be a plus the whole time. Um, okay, so now these H's will drop out and I actually have just like the most simplified version of this limit that I can get to. So this is X over the square root of X plus H plus the square root of X. So notice now this is a limit that I can totally take, right? So basically what I want to do now is I want to take this and I just want to replace it in this part of the problem since we did all the work. So let me clear some space again. And now I want to rewrite the entirety of this limit with this new part that I just found. So this becomes X over the square root of X plus H plus the square root of X plus, um, you know, I'll write this as a square root too, X plus H. So I went and rewrote the rational exponent as a square root. So now I can totally take the limit of this, right? So this becomes X over the square root of X plus the square root of X plus the square root of X. So let's clean this up a little bit. So this is X over two times the square root of X plus the square root of X. Now the square root of X, I can rewrite. Um, so I'm, I'm actually going to multiply this by the top and bottom by the square root of X. So if I do that, what this ends up turning into is X over the square root of X. And I want to be able to actually combine these two things together. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by two. So ultimately now I am left with three X over two times the square root of X. And hey, I can simplify this one more time, right? So this actually is going to be three halves times the square root of X. So that's actually the, the final answer finally. Um, okay. So, and actually, I guess I could have technically simplified that here. Sorry, I didn't see that. So if you got to this in a faster way, good for you. <laughs> so sometimes you just see math in the way that you see it and you've got to take your own journey. Okay. So remember how we still have to find that tangent line. <laughs> so we're not done. Um, so this is the form for the tangent line, right? So now let me clear all of this off so that we can find the tangent line. So here's how we figure out the slope of the tangent line. This is not the tangent line. This is how we find the slope of the tangent line. So now if I want to figure out the slope of my tangent line, I plug in four. And so this will come out to um, just three then, right? That'll be the, the actual value. So this is my M. So now I can use my point slope form. So this is going to be Y minus eight equals three times X minus four. So I get y minus eight equals three x minus 12. And so then finally my tangent line will be three x, um, three x what minus four? Yeah, three x minus four, there's my tangent line. So that was a tough one, right? That is not that is not a trivial, easy problem. And sometimes when you're working with the definition of the derivative, it's it can be a little bit tricky. So that's why you learn all that stuff about limits. So that's it for this video. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Feel free to drop me any comments if you have them and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching.